Hello everyone. Let's hope that Disney got this one right. This is Mike Check 95 along with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check Movie Review. Now, I know recently I've been putting up some top 10s of movies that I've reviewed in the past. But I figured I'd give that a little bit of a pause and release this movie review since it just came out Friday, which the release date for this video will be Monday, today. But it is what it be. The movie that I reviewed today and watched is the new Predator film called Prey, the first Predator film under the Disney name. Let's hope and pray that this film was good. Critics rate this film a 9.2 out of 10, and audiences rate this film an 8.3 out of 10. There are no budget or box office numbers because this is an extreme exclusive film, which is very interesting because one of my comments on this movie is that this is the very first Predator film that is stream ex exclusive. I'll get into that in a little bit. But before I continue on with my thoughts on the movie, if you enjoyed this review and any other content I've put out, in the past or anything that's coming out in the future that you may like. Like, share, subscribe, join the madness. The Discord link is down below. Click on it, say hi, share your thoughts, give me some ideas. Go for it. We are a variety channel. We're up for anything. Pros, cons, and comments of Prey. Comments first. Uh, there is no connection to the 2018 Predator film in this movie, which is a good thing because Predator 2018 is probably one of the most atrocious Predator films I have ever watched. This film took about four years to be worked on. Some of that may have to do with the fact that with like COVID going on and everything, and that there was also a rights lawsuit between the original writers of Predator from 1987 and Disney's uh, 20th Century Studios. Possibly put it on hold for about a year. I didn't really look too far into details when it came to that, but it halted production for a little bit. But Obviously, they came out with a new deal, and the film came out, as you can see that lovely little face, or big face, behind me. An interesting fact about this film is that when uh, movie producers um, put out movies, they don't put the official title of the movie on the script, just so that it won't leak out or anything, to kind of keep it hidden from the, uh, the crowd. The working title for this film was Skull. The director wanted to also kind of approach this film trying to kind of go back to how the first film looked, keeping it in the jungle and the uh, nature-like environment. So they tried to replicate the same scenery feel as the first film, which I will get into that when I get into my pros. And also, this is possibly the first Predator that is sent to Earth. One of my cons I kind of want to point out is uh, kind of the fact that this film is stream ex exclusive. It kind of depends on how you look at it, because this film, when I watch it, it's free on Hulu, surprisingly. And, like, it's easier to access when you're at home and watching it, like I just watched it just now. But at the same time, it takes away that, that movie theater, that theatrical, like, feel to it, where you're enjoying it at a movie theater. I, for one, kind of prefer new movies in a movie theater-like uh, setting, but at the same time, I get with the new branching of ideas where people not really want to go out as much. And the uh, other con that I have uh, is that the Native Americans were fluent in English. I kind of get it to kind of get the narrative across. I kind of feel like this film is still retold through another uh, person that, was tr that, that translated it. I kind of feel like that's what was going on with this movie. But at the same time, you'd just be stuck reading subtitles the whole movie. Like, I almost did turn on subtitles, but I decided not to. There's, like, a whole section where there's, like, a, a camp of, like, French um, people who are, like, invading the area and kind of, like, growing and learning the lands and whatnot, and they strictly speak French, except for one person who's a translator or just knows multiple languages. Kind of weird that the Native Americans had that fluent of the uh, English language. But again, gotta push the narrative forward somehow. 
I enjoyed that they tried to replicate the scenery feel when it came to the first film because this film felt like a breath of fresh air the entire time and it just it was beautiful to look at and it felt like a thriller sci-fi horror action film all the, pretty much the entire time and it was like the perfect environment for this movie and that is that's a big plus. I want to say that some of the Predator fans are getting a little tired of like Predators fighting in the city and everything. They kind of go back and forth with how these movies movies have gone so far. In my opinion, every single one that has a jungle-like feel to it has done a little bit better, or vastly better, when you compare the two that have been in the cities, than those two films. Just by scenery itself. I liked how they were like keeping the customs of like Native Americans, kind of like when they see something like weird or strange or like some odd happenings going around, they kind of viewed it as like challenges for for themselves or for the tribe or like they viewed it like gods or like demons and stuff like that. Like they uh, kept, they, they called the predator ship the Thunderbird and they, the main character viewed that as like a challenge to become like a hunter and everything. And just the fact that they use Native Americans in this film and it's just set back in 1719, so many years later uh, before the uh, first four films, it's just, it's, again, a breath of fresh air. It's a new idea, it feels like, even though it's kind of copy and paste of the first film, but it feels new, and I like it. For a uh, streaming exclusive film, you could tell what was CGI'd and what wasn't, but it wasn't like an eyesore, it wasn't horrible to look at, it honestly looked really good. Anything involving the tribal predator, that's what I'm just going to call him, looked great when it came to doing CGI effects. And the look of the predator just looked fantastic. It was very different from the other ones with like the um, the, the skeletal structure of its head and the way that its head was shaped to like the helmet. It looked like uh, an actual skull of an actual creature but it looked like they built in their uh, gadgets and their like their thermal imaging vision inside the skull. I thought that was really cool. Again, a lot of new stuff that is shown in this film and some callbacks to the old to the older ones. Keeping the theme of predator and prey, it kind of went back and forth on showing like like the animals of the uh, area showed like a like a, a rat killing an ant and then a snake killing the rat and then the predator killing the snake and then it showed like a wolf chasing after a uh, a rabbit and then the predator killed it kind of saying hey i'm the top of the food chain and then it showed a bear attempting to kill the main character but again the predator kills the bear to also kind of tie in with the fact that i feel like this is possibly the first predator ever sent to earth is that it looked like that it was scanning and trying to learn the environment and what is there and what's a threat and what's not and it, it targeted the animals first which it was interesting that it was like in its language it was like labeling what one is what and keeping it in its database and it probably was being sent back to their planet to figure out like what is what the fact that she was able to pretty much take her created weapon of like the axe that she like carved out of stone to make it sharp and then she makes like a, a rope out of like tree bark and tree string and whatever and ties it to the axe and is able to throw it and retract it back with the string that was an interesting scene to show and showing her how she built that and kind of displaying it in action as it becomes more important later in the movie and right after that it finally showed how the predator basically de-skinned its uh, kill skulls there's like it's like a weird um gel spray mist fog thing that like basically disintegrates all like skin and fur and hair and just leaves like the bone of the skull that was honestly cool that they were able to finally show how they did that as in the other movies they just kind of like ripped it out and it just came out clean i talked about the tribal predator already again i like the look of it um it, i think the the helmet it is supposed to look like a skull but i also think it's also made out of metal because it never really got destroyed it still looked cool that it resembled like a skull as like a, a war a chief or like a, a tribal hunter would wear after its kill and it like wears it as a trophy and everything. Like it just, it just look at it. Look at how beautiful that looks. When it comes to taking out all the sci-fi elements of this film, uh, it's 
when it comes to historical accuracy, it's kind of close to it a little bit. There might be some things that are changed here and there just to make the narrative work, but for the movie itself and what it did, it looked close to historic historically accurate, which I also kind of respect and really, really like that they paid attention to those details. Again, that's a lot of hard work put into in four years, so they really, really must have paid attention to their history class. I talked about the uh, disintegration spray earlier. They also showed some other, like, other new and old tech that the Predator had throughout the film, like there was the uh, the shield that it had that pretty much also worked as like the throwing blade. Like it, it, it could work as a throwing blade, like a throwing disc, but it, it was a basically a sharpened edge shield that could like slice and also block bullets. And then there was like these um, uh, long metal string things that were like those slap bracelets, but whenever it would like hit, come in contact with something and wrap around it, it would just basically cut that part off. So that was an uh, interesting tool that it had. The tri-beam was not the tri-beam. It was basically three... The, the tri-beam itself, and then it shot out three different, like, darts, like arrows, like spikes. It kind of goes to show that it explains also that it didn't quite understand or know the concept of guns just yet. But if they were to continue the narrative of the story in another movie they could show that later on when it came to them designing the, the uh, plasma cannon and turning it to an actual gun instead of just like a, a spike shooter. But still, the, the tri-beam spike shooter was still unique and cool. The wrist gauntlet bomb was also something kind of new. Normally those things just explode unless they didn't really show the full effect in other films but it like shot out three different discs and then they spread out and then just shot everyone in the within like a couple like at least a mile radius of the area it could be a, like a new feature that the uh, wrist gauntlet had that they never really explored but it's just all the new and old tech being meshed together and shown throughout the film was also great which i kind of feel like they kind of took away from that in the last film where they just focused on the making the predators bigger and giving them bigger wrist gauntlet blades. I kind of wrote this at the very end after the movie was over. Uh, overall, this film was really good. It had great action sequences and had a really good narrative. Like it followed what it was supposed to do when it came to like the native tribe. It worked for the narrative and it was a great, great, great story. And from start to finish. It felt like it was a gr it was a perfect runtime for the film for what they're going for. It never felt like that it was being rushed. It never felt like it was being like slowed down or being stretched out or stalled. It just felt like a perfect pace of a film, beat by beat by beat, all the way to the hour and a half mark. So this film overall, besides the two cons that came out in this film, was surprisingly really good. And I was one of the ones that was really concerned that Disney was going to fuck it up somehow since they bought the rights to all the to most of Fox and all of Fox's properties like Predator, Alien and all the other rated R franchises that they picked up. This kind of gives me a new hope and just the fact that this film was a total breath of fresh air just made this film oh so much better. So for my final rating of Prey I'm going to have to go with a number in between the critics and the audiences, and I'm going to go with an 8.5. Because of the fact that it was a strong film, it felt like a suspenseful horror action thriller movie set in the 1700s in a perfect environment with the perfect setting and just the perfect build to it. It's perfect everywhere, pretty much. Just a couple things here and there that... Eh, and it also didn't really have the same feel as the first one, but this one was like a perfect blend of like horror and action. So, eight and a half for me. And I will be adding this to my Predator playlist. Quick ranking, this film probably gets put in the second spot. So I'd go the original Predator, Prey, Predator 3, Predator 2, Predator 2018. So there you have it. That is Mike Check 95 with another Mike Check Productions Mike Check movie review. 
we're going to be going back to our regular scheduled programming with my last three top ten lists and then we're going to pick right back up with a movie review that I recorded about a month ago and that I haven't edited yet that's going to be the review of Small Soldiers and then there'll be some new content coming your way but until then this is Mike Check 95 signing out